Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR, HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSRHealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Welcome to Radio AMB, designed for those who want to live a long and vibrant life. I am Alicia Benkovich, your host, and someone who feels passionately about the health and beauty products and services we all rely on to live a beautiful and vivacious life. Radio AMB, which stands for American Made Beauty, where we tell the secrets behind the making of health and beauty products. Our program sponsor today is Free Your Main, Main spelled M-A-N-E. You can find Free Your Main products on freeyourmain.com or at anthropology stores and salons and spas across the United States. On today's show, we are going to cover the 2016 Naha Show and Awards. This annual event takes place in Las Vegas in conjunction to the Cosmoprof Show and highlights the achievements of some of the beauty industry's biggest and brightest stars. In today's feature segment, I will be speaking to one of the stars of the Naha Awards, Amon Carver. We will take a peek into his story and how he got to where he is today and then take a look at the show. So instead of our usual format, we were where we use our In the Jar and Beauty That's Soul Deep segments to cover our favorite. We'll use that to cover our favorite highlights of the Naha show. Finally, we will wrap up with the Beauty Biz segment and learn why the Naha Awards are so important to the beauty industry. Our program sponsor today is Free Your Main, so let's go ahead. My guest today is Amon Carver, a five-time nominee of the Naha Awards for Editorial Stylist of the Year, Almond Carver has gained recognition in the hair and beauty industry for his refined aesthetic, continued passion, and portfolio of flawless looks. Originally from Salt Lake City, Almond first studied hair in Colorado. His New York career began at the Warren Tricomi Salon in the Plaza Hotel, where he quickly became noticed as one of their premier stylists. Amon continued to build his loyal clientele at the prestigious Mizu Salon and later lead as artistic director at Matrix, a division of L'Oreal, for over 12 years. In his role, he traveled the world as one of the key spokespeople for Matrix. Most recently, Amon was named creative director for Lanza Healing Hair Care, where he will be responsible for leading the direction for imagery and creative content, brand and artist development, as well as training and platform work. His work has been featured on the pages of top magazines, including Vogue, Marie Claire, Harper's Bazaar, Vanity Fair, and American Salon. His celebrity clientele includes Kate Beckinsale, Molly Sims, Amanda Seyfried, Kristen Dunst, and Leighton Meester. And last, but certainly not least, Amon has opened the Amon Cover Studio in New York City. So welcome, Amon, to the show. Thanks for being here with us. So excited to have you on the show today after the spectacular Naha Awards, but I would love to get a little more information about your background, um, how you started in the industry, and how you got to where you are today. Well, where to begin? (laughs) You did such a nice job of uh, that introduction there. Um, I I grew up in Utah, started Mm -hmm. doing hair there in Utah, and um, got some recognition from... uh, a L'Oreal brand called Matrix, Mm -hmm. um, where they asked me to join their design team when I was about uh, 22 years old, pretty fresh into my hair career, Mm -hmm. Uh, moved me to New York City where um, the the opportunity sort of blossomed from there. So I landed in that Warren Chacomi salon. Um, But with Matrix, I was specifically um, given the opportunity to travel all over the world and help launch the product line, um, the Matrix line, into various countries across across the world. Oh, wow. I was working with them. I was, I was in probably about 38 or 40 different countries to help launch and spread that product and really connect with hairdressers. Um, and that's kind of where I found my passion for what I do with, not, with Lanza now is really just kind of connecting and creating the visual imagery for the brand, but also um, helping hairdressers connect with what they do and help them uh, feel like they're bigger impact than that, the, the, the actual 
ripple effect that they can have just by making people feel beautiful that day we can actually um, create like a big impact in the world I love that I love that I think that's this, uh, I've been just like a year and a half two years opening the salon in New York City and um, it's kind of been a wild roller coaster ride but I'm enjoying every second <laughs> I'll bet. I think that that's really important. What um, what stylists and people in the beauty uh, industry do is they they help people on more than just um, an outside beauty um, way. They're actually helping people on on a deeper level. And I like that you you brought that up. I have a I have a question though. Um, growing up in Utah, what what what? How did you know that you wanted to work with hair? How, how did that how did that kind of materialize for you? It didn't really happen on purpose. I wasn't one of those people that that was born a hairdresser that I knew I was going to be a hairdresser all the time. In fact, I, I used to ride, ride like ride horses and train horses, and I oh, wow. thought that's what I was going to be doing with the rest of my life. Um, but funny enough, um, right when I was graduating high school, I was kind of like trying to find any route that I could to not go to college immediately. <laughs> and one of the clients or were the people that I'd been riding and training horses for in Colorado, he, um, he owned a hair school and a chain of hair salons there. And so it became sort of like, well, why don't you come to my hair school? You can stay in Colorado and like avoid going to college just for like a minute. I was planning on just staying there for like the duration of hair school and then picking up college because I, I really didn't know I would have any passion or any connection to the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. But I... I'll never forget the day, the first day that I went to hair school, I met this group of people, these hairdressers that are, um, they're so passionate, they're so accepting, they're so just like um, diverse in who they are, but they're kind of unified in this belief and this, this desire to want to make people feel amazing and want to make people feel better about themselves. And mm -hmm. I got addicted and attracted to that that way of being. And I was like, okay, I don't know if I'm going to be any good at hair, <laughs> but I'm going to surround myself with these people because they just... They had this infectious way of just trying to make the world a better place that I wanted to uh, attach to. I, I love that. That's um, kind of my story as well. Coming from fashion, I really have discovered how welcoming and supportive the beauty industry is. I, th I think it's a really amazing thing that um, I've experienced um, working within beauty. Just to, like, come be who you are, let your freak flag fly, just <laughs> let's get together with this like, uh, unified purpose. I love it. Right, right. I love it. That, that's exactly how I feel about it. It's, it's great. Um, so who uh, were some of your mentors um, within the industry? Do you have someone that comes to mind that in the early, in the early time of your um, career kind of were those people that you looked, for, looked towards as um, inspiration? Yeah, I mean, when I, when I first went to hair school, it was, um, it was like a Tony and Guy school first that had like some Paul Mitchell influence. So like Anthony Muscola was a big mentor of mine, or a big at least. Um, I don't. He didn't mentor me directly, but he was like an icon for me. Right? Oh, okay. Muscola, and then um, when I went over to Matrix. Oh, and then also like uh, Robert Cromings with Paul Mitchell. Mm. Um, I don't know if you're familiar. These guys are both very iconic hairdressers. They oh, kind of, wow. Like, lead the way for session styling and for platform work for hairdressers. Um, and then once I uh, started working officially for Matrix, um, this, there's a, a man named Nicholas French who you may have heard of. He's mm -hmm. a, like a multi-award winning um, hairdresser as well who's famous for his avant-garde styling. Um, he mentored me, Christopher Benson, who's also a recipient of many Naha Awards, was also sort of like a big brother as we were going through. And then as you start to meet these people, the network and the people that kind of mentor you and guide you along the way sort of like grows. And mm -hmm. then I feel like what's one of my favorite things is I've, you know, the, the, the artistry of hairdressing, which I guess is the same in all fashion, is sort of, it, it, it changes and it molds based on your influencers, right? So, like, I would be attracted to the avant-garde styling of Nicholas French and try to put my spin on some of that stuff, but it's never his. Right. And, and so some of these artists, whether it was cutting or coloring or avant-garde styling, ended up sort of influencing the unique M and Carver style that I have today. Mm-hmm. That's that's great. I mean, I I think having that avant-garde style, it's just so um, spectacular to watch and 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 to um, see some of the styles that you you come up with um, in that in that kind of genre. It's really spectacular. I love it. Um, how does how does one become such a successful stylist? How do you think you've gotten to where you are now, as opposed to maybe other people within the industry are maybe looking for that special sauce of how you made it? I, I, I don't pretend to be the best hairdresser in the world. 
I think that I have some natural talent, um, but I, I, will, I will throw back 100% of the credit to uh, the way that I was raised. I give my parents a lot of credit for instilling an, an incredible work value and also sort of like a, either a humility or just a kind of know your place kid like type of mentality. So it, even though I've been able to and been fortunate to work with some of the best hairdressers, there's some part of me that's very, you know, like willing to pay my dues and willing to work hard and willing to learn and remain in sort of the learner position mm -hmm. rather than I'm the leader, I know everything, um, cocky type of thing. Right. I, I, would, uh, I, would, I would give any bit of, of, of success to that, to the fact that I've been able to be reminded, I have, I have a large family and my siblings quite frequently like to remind me just to not get too big for my britches, which is very <laughs> healthy for me. I love they're that. Like, they're just like, hey, remember who you are, remember where you came from and try to keep and, and own on to that. So any hairdressers that I feel like... Um, they, they're, they have these big dreams and big aspirations. I'll, I'll quietly remind them all the time, just stay green, stay growing, stay learning, stay in that posi mentality where you're not the best. Like always try to be better and always be available to learn from whoever it is that's, uh, that's rubbing up against you in the industry and, and people will respect that. I think people can see authenticity. No matter how hard you try to project yourself as the best, I think when, when you remain humble to your position and just grateful for those who have helped you along the way, then people are much more likely to, to put you into that spot. Absolutely. I think that's um, uh, humble, and I love the, the stay green, stay growing. I think um, a big part of that is ongoing education. I think that that's such a great thing within the beauty industry, that, um, that that's such an important thing. Keep Keep that um, education going. Keep that, um, you know, always learning new things. Um, that's so important. Keeping those techniques. The, the second that you're the best at everything, or the second that your brain starts to think that you are the master of all things, you're just, you've already lost momentum. There's new hairdressers coming up all the time. All these young hairdressers are showing me new ideas and new things that I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never even thought about putting that with that. Um, and so it's, it's a, one of the few industries where we can, you know, the veterans of the industry can learn just as much from that, you know, beauty school graduate as, you know, vice versa. They can just share those ideas and kind of keep growing back and forth. Amazing. I think, I think that's what fuels creativity. Correct. That. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fresh ideas. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, what is what is um, going on? What's what's next for you? You have your um, salon now in New York, and so what's what's down the pipeline for Amen now? Well, so it's it's a fun situation right now because many people don't know that my. The, the Ammon Carver Studio here in New York City is a hybrid hair salon and photo studio. So mm. it, it kind of gives me a couple of different branches in my mind for where my, my next steps can go. Mm -hmm. um, the salon is a fully operational salon. I have about 10 people that, that work for me here. But then about midway through the salon, it transitions into a fully operational photo studio, um, which creates a whole new relationship with magazines, editorial work, all that kind of stuff, and opportunities for my stylist to not only become like successful behind the chair in salon, but also start to get their work in print and work in that range where they're starting to do magazine work and work with celebrities and that kind of thing. So wow. um, a, a proven business model already, just on like two years, almost two years now, mm -hmm. we're already looking at uh, expanding into Los Angeles and potentially Miami. Los Ooh. Angeles is our first one. So that's probably what's coming up next. Um, I also am toying around with, it's a little early to really talk about it, but I'm toying around with um, p playing around with some products that, in the range of like hair accessories. Um, I'm quite passionate about fitness, not accessories like bows and headbands, but mm -hmm. more like um, fitness accessories that you can tie your hair in that helps sort of like keep your hair styled or, or hold the style while you're working out that kind of a range. Cause I'm I kind love of, it. I'm passionate about trying to blend the beauty and fitness world together because I feel like sometimes women sacrifice the fitness world to keep their beauty world perfect. You know what? That is such... Like no more washing your hair yes. or your workouts because you want to keep your hair fresh. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that hits home for me. talking about that because that's like sort of secret future plans. Okay, all right. But I, I think that's uh, such a fascinating um, uh, subject because I think so many women now work out so much and there is that, well, how do you still look cute? <laughs> So. I feel like there's, 
got to be a solution better than just the dry shampoo um, that helps women be able to keep that fitness fit lifestyle that makes them feel good and, and, and makes them healthy from the inside out while still feeling great about the way their hair looks. Right. That's my goal and my mission in the future is to start to bridge that gap a little bit for those. For those. Right. And you, and you mentioned it's because you're very into fitness yourself and, and, and living that healthy lifestyle? <laughs> fitness addict i love it um well great i i think that um it, it's it, it was also kind of a theme kind of going into the naha awards i saw there was a big theme with that with fitness and kind of that active look and beauty i think all of those things are kind of coming together for us um in the industry and i i think that that's i mean you see it in the fashion world too right now you have a lot of active wear or leisure wear that mm-hmm. is very on trend right now you have cool sweatpants and like tennis shoes that are like very fashiony that are like kind of on trend right now because I think people are more conscious and more aware of like being active and being fit but also wanting to be on trend and look cool at the same time. I love it. That's I think that that's kind of where we're going and I I, I love that you're you're in tune to that and you're you're seeing where that that is headed and that's that's going to be really exciting for the for the future. For sure. Um, So can you, for our listeners that maybe don't know, can you kind of give an intro to what the Naha Awards are? Yes. So um, North American Hairstyling Awards are essentially what we like to consider the Oscars for the hair and beauty industry. Mm -hmm. So it's... um, a way for the industry's best. It's, it's an open competition, which is it's basically photographic submissions of your work, like in, in, in collections. So they have a bunch of different categories that can be that are judged by the industry's best, um, and anybody can enter. But the top collections go into the categories, and we have a, a, a finalist announcement, just like the award show, and then they have this uh, red carpet evening event where the um, where the winners are announced. And it's one of those things where uh, the industry recognition and the clout that you get or the recognition that you get from the North American Hairdressing Awards is it's unparalleled for us. It doesn't necessarily, it's not prize money or anything mm-hmm. like some people might. Have. Like, how much do you win? I get that with my clients all the time. I'm like, well, no, it's not. There's no prize money. But what happens is the respect and the, the cred that you get um, in the hair industry, um, it just opens a lot of opportunities, a lot of um yeah, a lot of doors get opened when you when you win a North American Hair Selling Award. Yeah, exactly, and I think that it kind of builds that sense of community and kind of bonds everyone. That's kind of my general feeling from the show. It's like a, it's like a healthy competition, right? So mm-hmm. It's an interesting place to be in there, and everybody wants to win, and everybody wants to be the best, but you, you network with people, and you get to meet people who are also striving for their best to inspire each other who in a way sort of like we were talking about earlier they influence each other so some of the industry's best i've seen their photos their submissions for naha and been inspired for some of my own work as a result and so when everybody's pushing to put their best work forward it just creates this it breathes this like environment of creativity that just elevates the industry every single year that it happens breeds an environment of creativity i think that that is a great (laughs) statement right there for the for the naha awards i mean i i think that that's the number one um kind of sense i got from the whole show was just wow look at the creativity behind because i like to i when i'm trying to paint the picture for my customers about what this award show looks like it's it's a red carpet event that technically is you know, it's black tie-ish. It's very, very dressy, but it becomes kind of funny because when you ask a bunch of hairdressers to get into black tie scenario, you get a lot of different... Oh, <laughs> yes. Different <laughs> Again, the creativity just starts to run wild. So some people are full gown, mm-hmm. you know, like beautiful Oscars type of gowns, and mm-hmm. some people are very, like, edgy, studs, spiky. Right. Like kind of, it just runs the gamut, so it creates sort of an interesting people watching. Oh, the people right watching is, yeah, is unbelievable. <laughs> so, so exciting. Um, yeah, so we're going to um, talk some more in um, our next three segments about the Naha Awards, get into some nitty-gritty. We have some great news about Amin from the Naha Awards as well, and um, I think it's going to be really exciting, so... If um, we could just 
we're going to wrap it up, and um, when we come back with, with Amin, we're going to uh, discuss some more about the Naha Awards. Please don't go away. Shh, over here. Here's a secret for a virus-free computer. ESET. They've been a pioneer in the antivirus industry for over 25 years. 25 years of innovative, top-rated antivirus protection. ESET's award-winning security solutions provide a safe online experience for over 100 million home and business computer owners. They are so affordable, fast, and simple to use. So be gone, you blue screen of death. ESET's on my computer. If it's not on yours, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on ESET now. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Now. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. Where positive people and radio unite. HealthyLife.net Welcome back. You're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. I am your host, Alicia Benkovich. In this segment we call In the Jar, I'm here with Amon Carver, and we are covering some of our favorite highlights and moments from the Naha Awards. Amon, that was quite a spectacular show, and I want to start out by congratulating you for winning for Salon Team of the Year and Master Hairstylist of the Year. How excited are you? I'm still floating. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. What did you think about Alan Cumming uh, as the choice for the MC? because I was like, oh, I can't really see how he's going to relate to that. I had never seen him in that type of a host role. But right away, the way that he just sort of, um, he took it seriously. I feel like in years past, I'm not going to name names because I don't, wanna, I don't know who's listening, but there have been hosts in the past that you can tell that they don't take it as uh, I want to say, like, they don't have respect for what the awards mean to us. Okay. Like, they're sort of like, they're almost laughing at the, the, the word Naha because they just don't, they don't relate to it. Got it. But he seemed, like, genuinely, like, respectful about how serious these war- awards were, but then he brought his comedic, like, moments to keep the show fun. Mm-hmm. Right? So I thought he was, like, actually really, really great. I, I, I loved that. I thought that it kind of set the mood for the whole show and kind of, he, I think he was kind of perfect for for, for the show, so I, I really loved that that choice. And I'm I'm um, kind of bouncing around because I went straight to Alan Cumming, but I, I still want to talk about what was it like? Because is this the first time you've actually won a Naha Award? Yeah, when my friends like to tease me and say I, I before this I was the Susan Lucci of the <laughs> Naha Awards because I had been this is. 
Prior to winning, this was my 11th nomination with no wins up until this point. So to come home with two was finally like validating and made me a little bit, um, uh, exactly more than a little bit, very, very proud and very, very excited at long last, it felt like. <laughs> oh, wow. That was so spectacular. I was so happy for you. I like jumped out of my seat and <laughs> believe it. it was so great. And I, 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 I loved that. Um, being up there on stage, you can really, I really got this feeling that this is really an industry where you can be who you, whoever you want to be. You can kind of say whatever you want to say. You can really be yourself. And I, I really loved that. It was like, oh, it was so touching to me. That that's kind of the feeling of that show. Were you speaking about the colorful? I thought. I just think. It was it was such true raw emotion. I mean, you said what was <laughs> there. So. Any other words, especially for that salon team win. I'm so. It's honestly like I couldn't be more grateful. In this short amount of time, something has happened where um, my salon team has been. I've just. I've been able to attract these stylists that are not only like incredibly. They're they're incredibly talented. They inspire me all the time with, with their work, but. But bigger than that, they, they all have this, like, really passionate desire to do things in the world that are, like, I, I, I don't know. I've always been, I've always wanted to take a more active role in, like, charitable organizations and that kind of stuff. But I've, I feel like I've been, you know, running the hamster wheel at trying to just keep up with life, and I never put down, like, the time mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and I have this group now that they're doing those kinds of things and organizing those kinds of things all the time. And now I'm, because they're taking part of it, I just jump on board, and because of their beautiful actions and their beautiful desires, I'm very, I'm very fortunate to be able to take part and enjoy those types of like beautiful experiences too. So there couldn't have been a group of people more deserving of that Salon Team Award. And so when I was, was accepting the award, I, I couldn't find any other words other than just to tell people that they were effing, you know what I mean? <laughs> those are the words I would choose. <laughs> No, I thought I thought it was so great and it was so heartfelt and you were I mean it was genuine and that's that's what I what came across to me. I thought I thought it was great and I just I like the edgier style of the show. I like that you can say whatever you want and you can wear whatever you want and you can be whoever you want and that's I mean to me that was, you know, what the Naha Awards kind of left me with was that feeling. And I think that's why Yeah, it was my first time going. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, yeah. When you saw me up there wearing a harness over my shirt and tie. A great outfit. Are you kidding me? I loved it. And I think that's why Alan Cumming was such a great choice because he is so out there and he's kind of flamboyant and he's himself. And, you know, he went through all his stages of his different hairstyles over the years. And, yeah, I thought I thought it was like, oh, wow. identify with one of those looks. Uh-oh. Yeah, so I thought that was um, really, really great. And I thought the... You know the the vignettes by um, the different brands were just beautiful as well. You know what? Every year, every year, Aveda for me, mm -hmm. just they just put it down so well and so beautifully. They are those types of shows are literally the exact reason why I enjoy being like a, a, a platform artist and doing those kind of sh like like those kind of presentations mm -hmm. because. They're just inspiring. Like it doesn't matter whether it's edgy or whether they found this way of doing this sort of like flowery walk, but in a way that was super cool. Mm -hmm. And Antoinette Benders has been sort of like an icon inspiration for me such, for such a long time. Mm -hmm. So not only was her show just incredible to watch, yeah, but she was also the one who gave me the award for my master mm -hmm. stylist of the year. So when I got backstage, I was like, I was like a little kid. Oh. I was like, oh my gosh, you have to take a picture. With me. I'm crazy about your work. And she's oh, like, you're wow. the one who just won Master Style of the Year. Let's take a picture together. I was just like bowing to her, and, and I just so her they're, Aveda by far they stole the show for me. They 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 absolutely did. I mean, they, they got a standing ovation. It, yeah, it was, that was the first one on my feet. They were amazing. People went crazy. I was like, wow, that was amazing. And you know, the other thing that stuck out in my head too was the Moroccan oil. Their theme of community and coming together and love is love, yeah. I thought that was really great, too. Well, that's synonymous with, I, I love that, too, and that's, like, one of my big um, sort of missions as I've come over with Lanza. We just started, I've been with, their, with Lanza for about two years now, 
and it's a great brand with great product lines, but what I wanted to do is sort of help breathe um, that, that heartfelt connection into the life of the brand because it's such great people, but it doesn't always come across when you do an advertisement or a video that just shows a model with beautiful hair. Right. It's not enough these days with brands to just make amazing products. There's, the market is saturated with amazing products. That's the truth. And people, um, and the, the people that are listening to this show right now, everybody is smart enough now to, to pick great products that use quality ingredients, but they want to also like attach to brands that are doing something for the right reason, that have a really good like heartfelt purpose or, or a mission that are, it's good for the environment or, or it's helping people who, you know, have, have, uh, you know, other needs in the world mm-hmm. that, that's bigger mm-hmm. than just like, a beauty empire rising above, you know, an ivory tower or whatever. So um, when I saw that, I was like, you know, cheering for Moroccan oil too because that's something that's near and dear to our heart at Lanza. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have what we call our big mission. Right. Believe, inspire, grow. But that's just attaching to the, the bigger reasons in life and the bigger purpose. It's being more than just hairdressers. It's changing lives. I, it, it is. It is more than just hair, hairdressing. It is changing lives. And I, I think that that walking away from that, lo- that love is love and, and that, that giving more than just you just a brand and you're helping with, you know, someone on the outside, the, the brand is speaking from something deeper and um, connecting to their um, customers on, on, a, on a deeper level. I think that that's what everyone's kind of looking for. Yeah, so, for that yeah, I love that. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk more about the Naha Awards. <laughs> the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now this same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call EarthChannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. Well, be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Life. 
Welcome back. You're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. I am your host, Alicia Benkovich. This is normally the section that we call Beauty That's Soul Deep. But today, Ammon Carver and I are discussing our favorite moments in the Naha Awards in Vegas during the Cosmoprof show. So, Ammon, I think one of the things that stuck out to me was I loved the, the text to vote for the People's Choice Awards. It really got everyone involved. Have they done that before? Yeah, so that's, I, I can't, don't quote me because I don't know how many, but I think they've been doing that for like the last three years. Okay. Um, which always is great because it gives people the opportunity to sort of like, um, you know, um, vote for their favorite and get to have like an active part or like an, an interactive part of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always sort of like the surprise winner. It really is because you have, you have people that get, um, that are like, they're in the finalist categories, but you don't have, you have no idea who's really going to fall into that special like stylist choice award. Mm-hmm. And I feel, um, I mean, the People's Choice Award, for me, it's like a really, like, it's a really good, like, it feels really good, right? Right. It's, it's not industry professionals. It's not people that are just, like, judging it for a particular um, aesthetic, or you, you never know politi- politics. Right, kind of right. Thing, which I have no idea, but it's just honest people just looking at the photo and voting on the one they think is the most beautiful. So. Yeah, I, I think that's, you you're, you feel like these are your peers, these are the, these are these people that you are kind of in line with, and they're, they're letting you know that they they like you, you know, that they, they, they love your work and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I thought um, Matthew, I want to make sure I say his name right, Tildesley, because um, he, he was the winner of the People's Choice Awards. And I love that he said that he dropped out of college to go to beauty school. Like, yeah. and it, such a big applause for that. I thought that was really great because I think that... It's, it's finally starting to kind of like change people's perspective, people's perspective on the beauty industry in terms of the choice. You know, back back when I was getting ready to go to hair school, there was still a stigma, you mm-hmm. know, about like hair school is what <laughs> what you did if college didn't work out. Right. And, and now it's kind of happening the opposite way. In fact, I remember when I was finishing hair school and like started to get some momentum in my career, and I finally got to the point where you know, like within two years, I was making a good a good salary. And my older brothers were both looking at me like, wait a minute, dude, you're making the same amount of money I am, but I still have all this college, like, loan debt to pay off. Exactly. I don't have any debt. <laughs> it's, I, yeah, it's a good I, spot, and I'm really happy that he mentioned that, too. I, yeah, I, I thought that that just kind of resonated with the crowd, and it was a big applause when he said that. And it, I think that that, yeah, that, that stigma is absolutely going away. And I think with an award show like this, and you see the kind of, I mean, the money that's put in to this kind of a, an event and, and all of that, you know that this is, this is big. This is not, you know, something you do that you, you know, just because you couldn't get into college or something. People are serious. They're making, they're making um, some serious money, and they've made this as a serious career choice. And um, you don't get to be in that spot or standing on that stage doing that kind of work unless it's something you've dedicated your, your, you know, your career to. Right, right. Exactly, and I, I I loved that. I think um, another one of the um, vignettes that stuck out to me, I think they had two of them, was a Beauty Underground. Uh-huh. Very sleek, minimalist, that against that Icelandic like backdrops, and yeah. I thought that was really high fashion and had some real um, resonance to it. I really liked that. Um, yeah, Beauty Underground. Oh, I'm a good friend of mine, Charlie Price. Um, had kind of kind of created that beauty underground um, group, and it's it's really good. It's I mean they're super powerful. They are um, really really known for not having a lot of brand affiliation. They're just hairdressers doing amazing work, inspiring everybody, and so they try to keep into that kind of like purity s- scope mm-hmm. like you're talking about. That's just focused on hair without like a, a lot of the bells and whistles and it was kind of an emotional presentation at some points too it was really really powerful yeah that's that, that's exactly I, I really really enjoyed that and you know um to go back to the beginning of the show um with the redkin and that made me think of the the workout chic that was kind of part of their totally, theme totally. i mean like um they they kicked off the show with such high energy mm-hmm. such high energy and I'm really proud of them. A lot of my friends on that Redkin team, um, especially in contrast and the growth that they had from last year, they also did a presentation. Excuse me, presentation last year that was not nearly as, um, as on point with mm. what they did this year. It was so high energy, and um, the PBA put together such 
a cool stage this year. Like, I really thought the lights and everything worked extremely well to kind of capture the audience and have everybody's attention there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that. I've actually been conceptualizing and kind of been inspired to, to work off a shoot since I saw that Red, Redkin presentation. So oh, wow. Quite inspired by um, Yoji Yamamoto does that Y3 brand. Yes. In collaboration with Adidas. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love it because it's couture, but it's like uh, it's like fitness. Right. It's like active wear. Right, um, right. Yeah, and I think that was very much the Redkin message. Yeah, and I loved the, you know, the, the artistic team on stage actually cutting hair. While all of that was going on. Give them a moment. They have a, they have a large, well-respected team, and it's hard for them to, they do all the work and not get a little quick little moment. So I thought it was a, a really great way for them to get up there and kind of show their stuff for a second and, and get, let the audience get a chance to kind of see who's responsible for all those beautiful models and stuff. Yeah, just, I mean, the what must go into planning all of that and, and um, coming up with those ideas and what's going to be, What's what's on trend right now? What are we looking for in the future? What how can we speak to that? I think yeah. they really nailed it with all yeah. those different. Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's no small task, especially when you have a big brand with that many like you know that many cast of characters and well respected characters. You get into a room conceptualizing a show like that, and you've got a lot of different people predicting what the industry should see, and then you have they're representing a brand, Redkin, and so it has to make sure it's in line with, with their brand messages. So there's all kinds of factors mm-hmm. that kind of compile together to making a show like that which is all the more reason why it's like a, a big applause when it goes well because there's you know the more variables and the more opinions you have the quicker that show can sort of spiral out of control and not go well so when right. it does, it's just like a, a, a big like a, a big it's a big feat it's a big yeah accomplishment it is problem. and i think that for me especially coming from the, the fashion industry i love how they really brought together hair and fashion and how those are so deeply connected yeah. and you know i mean it was it was like watching a fashion show i mean it was the same type of an experience yeah and it's so fun. I mean, so like, when i so uh the last two years i brought my boyfriend with me to the show and he has no i mean he's literally like the, he's so disconnected from the hair beauty industry <laughs> that i was like trying to I was trying to downplay the experience. I was like, listen, I don't, this may bore you to tears. You just have to sit there and be entertained. This is important to me. And every year he's just, I, he's like, that is so fun. It's so interesting. He's like, it's so, it's so engaging to watch the collaboration of fashion and the way that's interpreted through hair and all this stuff. So um, it's, kind of, it's kind of fun to see it from a non-hairdresser's perspective. We get sometimes as hairdressers so tunnel vision with what like we expect from a show because we do these hair shows and we have these expectations that it's nice to hear from a consumer perspective absolutely it's still cool and it's still got an engaging sort of entertaining quality to it so entertaining so engaging such a great show well let's let's end the segment on that note and um when we come back we will talk more about the beauty industry and how um the naha awards are so important so don't don't go away we'll be right back the thing about beauty it's pretty at americanmadebeauty.com we're all about the pretty making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine we have essentially everything you need and americanmadebeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the u.s of a imagine everything you need from the best hair skin and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at americanmadebeauty.com we also think you're pretty important so visit americanmadebeauty.com browse buy learn americanmadebeauty.com When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. We'll be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credential 
canceled category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. Oh, man, it never fails. My suitcase just got ripped apart. Life is a journey. Make it a pleasant one. You Samsonite. You know the name. For almost a century, Samsonite luggage has proved itself to be the worldwide leader in innovative travel solutions. Let it be yours. Visit HealthyLife.net's affiliate Samsonite on our homepage and click to look at the fine luggage from suitcases to golf travel bags. And don't forget, take a look at their travel accessories. Make life a journey. A pleasant one with Samsonite. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative. You are listening to Radio AMB, where we share the secrets behind the beauty industry. Our program sponsor today is Free Your Main. I'm Alicia Benkovich, and for the Beauty Biz segment of the show, I have Amon Carver, and we are covering the Naha Awards. And I would like to discuss the importance of this award show within the beauty industry, and who, we, and who better to attest to this than Amon, who has won now himself. Amon, what is so important about these awards? different things. I think that for hairdressers, it sort of creates, for a young hairdresser, it creates sort of like a goal, right? So Mm -hmm. a lot of the hairdressers that start working in my salon, their goal and their dream and aspiration is to get their work up to the quality of level where they can can become a finalist at Naha. So it helps them push themselves in their craft to an expectation that's at a measurable level. Like, I want to be good enough to be in the Naha Award. Right. Um, And then, and for those of us who've been a part of it and, and been there, it sort of it keeps you pushing yourself so that you don't become complacent. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that for myself, even if I'm a finalist in a certain category, my expectation of myself or my benchmark level for myself for the following year is like, yeah, but it's got to be better than that for, that for next year because I know everybody else is trying to beat themselves too. So it just, it keeps, the Naha Awards become a standard by which our industry keeps rising. Mm-hmm. Like everybody keeps measurably trying to compete at the highest level for the Naha Awards, and so it keeps our industry at its utmost level of excellence year after year. I I love that. I think that um, when it comes to being a a creative person, it's almost like if you don't set those goals for yourself, it's too easy to kind of ride on the wave of what you're good at. And without having those goals and something to kind of reach for, um, I, I think that that's, that's yeah. great. I that's mean, oh, my gosh, a thousand percent. It, it, it's less about the trophy. It's less about the, the actual win or even the recognition, but it's more just about, like, that, that personal benchmark to kind of keep yourself going forward or, or keep doing stuff that's new and fresh. I feel like um, what I've heard from – a lot of the people that I've mentored for the Naha Awards is they didn't realize that their work had started to get it start to get like a common theme. Because, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but until they they have it like done in a photograph and you can compare year to year, you're like, oh, that's sort of my look. Oh, I keep doing that same thing. And right. You have a measurable way of saying, am I am I growing or am I changing or is it sort of looking like I'm doing the same thing over and over again? And, so it, it provides an opportunity for you to kind of take a look at your own work. And then hopefully you win a trophy and all that's good. But <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Right. And I think, I mean, growing and recognizing, you know, that maybe you do need to change. Maybe you do need to um, mix it up or do something different. You don't ever want to fall into that, you know, stagnant, that's my thing I do. And It's a hard sell for a lot of people. In fact, I would say the, the hardest time for, for hairdressers to... To get themselves involved, I mean, I should say makeup artists too. I keep saying hairdressers just because that's me, but it's right. it's hair, it's nails, it's the whole beauty. Exactly. Um, it's uh, it's that first moment, that first time where you've you've started to believe in yourself as a hairdresser, and your clients love you, they're obsessed with you, and all that stuff. But um, when you put it on that photograph. And then as an artist, just like any artist, if you make a film or paintings in a show, art gallery or whatever, mm-hmm. the first time that you make your work available for, for criticism, right. you put your name attached to something and the whole world gets to, quote, judge you, uh, it's, it's nerve-wracking. It it's is, terrifying, yes. like vulnerable feeling in the world. And so once you've allowed yourself to kind of 
open yourself up to that vulnerability and realize that like people are going to feel what they feel and if you can just be like no this is what i do and this is my proudest work to, to date mm -hmm. as of right now i'm going to continually get better but when you can take yourself out of that like sheltered i don't want to show people because i don't want to be criticized place then you really just open yourself up to be even more creative as an artist or even even better because you're you're passing that vulnerability yes yeah i think uh that's a key to um a great artist is being able to take take that um you know that those those that cr the critique being able to handle the critique and take that information and change for the better yeah. that's ama that's amazing and i think also my kind of my takeaway from the naha awards was the sense of community and seeing how everyone is coming together and kind of congratulating each other and I really felt this warmth um, of uh, the best way to put it would be a community of artists together, um, all wanting all wanting each each other to be their best and do their best and celebrating that. It made me feel like a, I feel like a proud papa. You know, again, I'm, <laughs> I'm nodding back to my salon team win. Um, uh, many of them, you know, they've they haven't even been to the Naha Awards before, or they oh, have wow. been, but they never even knew what it was. They had never entered before. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing, where they all of a sudden were were people that they were they were being recognized, or they were being talked to, and they were being congratulated. They just had this overwhelming. Even before we actually won, just being nominated, they had this overwhelming amount of sort of like welcoming and congratulations and all this stuff that they just felt like it was i mean they're addicted they just want to make everybody fit and so th therefore it kind of passes forward and they're very kind and very like congratulatory mm -hmm. to people in turn because they felt that sort of same sort of warmth and so i think the naha awards it's one of those healthy competitions where people really are they're rooting for each other you know we may be in the same category but if you win i'm going to stand up i'm going to give you a hug you know i wanted to win but you won enjoy that moment and, and let's all keep growing from it right and i think you know with so many different personalities and different kinds of people and even I think when you talk about creative people and artists, it's hard to kind of ha have a sense of community and a place that you can feel safe in and these are my people and all of that. And I think that that's what I, I loved about the Naha Awards. It was like, let, like you said earlier, let your freak flag fly, be who you want to be. And these are, these are your people. They will embrace you, whatever you want to say or do or, or whatever. You know, you have some people every once in a while that get a little bit uh, more affected by not winning. Yeah, I'm sure. More, I'm uh, sure. Few and far between. For the most part, people are really supportive and happy for each other in those respective categories. When when somebody doesn't win, everybody's really got a good sportsmanship type of attitude, and it is all for the growth of the people. They razz each other a little bit, but in the end of the day, I don't know if you went to the after party um, at Eye Candy afterwards, but I didn't. there's really no... <laughs> There's not a lot of brand division, you know, and a mm -hmm. lot of, like, you have tribes mixing with tribes and people that are drinking with each other, and it's not like, it's not a clicky thing. It becomes sort of like a community thing, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, um, my, my biggest takeaway is that, you know, you, being in, being, I'm not a stylist and not being in that part of the industry, I was, I was thinking to myself, I want to be a part of this. <laughs> I want to be in this. <laughs> I want to be a part of this, so definitely um, a, a, a great show, and I think um, just I think it's a really important award show, and I love what what you're doing, and I think that you're an inspiration, and I really want to congratulate you uh, on your wins, and I want you to keep doing what you're doing and inspiring others and mentoring others, and well, thank you, thank you so much for for those kind of words, and um, I. I I'm blessed to have these these kids. I call them my kids, although some of them are, are older than me. But right. this team that I have here behind me, um, even if I even if I got a little tired of pushing and moving forward, they wouldn't let me stop for a second because we're all sort of united in the mm -hmm. same direction. Love it. Um, same same with my Lonza tribe that I'm working with. So I'm fortunate enough to have all these people around me that are all driven with that same goal and that the same things that you're like thanking me for doing. So there's no plan to stop. We're going to keep moving forward make some changes in the world and make sure people feel they're most beautiful uh, whenever possible. So. Oh, 
Beautiful. I love it. Well, um, we're going to wrap it up here with t- um, with our show today. I want to thank my guest, Amon Carver. Um, is there, you have social media or ways that people can reach out to you? Heck yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Amon Carver Studio is my Instagram. Okay. Um, or my personal Instagram is Amon Carver, um, which is a little more colorful. Not mm-hmm. bad, but not really. <laughs> Not as professional as the Amon Carver Studio one. I've got to go into my personal life there. And then, um, Ammon Carver, I, th- same thing on Facebook, Ammon Carver on okay. Facebook and Ammon Carver Studio on Facebook. So. Great, great. All right. Well, um, and don't miss our program next week where Patty Smucker will be interviewing Tina Perez, um, the FIDM Director of Beauty Industry Merchandising and Marketing at F- F- FIDM. And send your questions and comments to request at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. I'm Alicia Benkovich. You can hear Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. Thanks for listening to Radio AMB, where we think pretty is pretty important for all things in beauty. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now this same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call EarthChannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Obstacle racing. You know you want to try it. Well, try Reebok Spartan Race, the global leader in obstacle racing. With four different race levels, their goal is to get you up off the couch and throw you into the mud and on the trails to give you the adrenaline rush of your life. Obstacle courses are designed to test your resilience, strength, stamina, quick decision-making skills, and give you the ability to laugh in the face of adversity. Visit HealthyLife.net advertiser page and click on Spartan Race. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network.